This entertainment production is brought to you today by the Samurai Aquatics and Decor MetaVenture. Scan that QR code or click that link in the description and dive yourself headfirst into the Samurai Aquatics Discord server to pleasure your peepers on our current and future range of outdoor decor. The Wine and She Show is a Metaverse and NFT discussion and interview series brought to you by Metaverse Ventures Entertainment and host Ben68 and more cheats. Warning, the information and opinions within are solely the views of the individuals involved contains content not suitable for anyone. G'day and thanks for listening to or watching the Wine and Cheese and the Metaverse Show. I'm Ben68 here with my co-host More Cheese for episode 69, recorded on Friday the 20th, 7th of January for Cheese, which is Saturday the 28th for me. Today we talked Upland-ish. Went over some interesting articles, showcased our new shiny Samurai Aquatic showroom, went over the Carnival winners, which was basically the amazingly talented D-Tech. But that's not all. We then explored Elijah's real node LA gallery that is the first of its kind, which is pretty big, connected to his in-home Upland address. Ben, some might say that it's there for the Genesis gallery within the upland metaverse makes sense to me and oh mama now that is hot and bear with us on this one we're a bit all over the shop today so hit that 2x replay speed button and get ready to dive yourselves right into another shitty episode of wheresoever The ranger, one's like it stumps, one's from Australia, one's from the Bronx. Talking about the metaverse and NFT, interviewing all the real crypto teams. Hello, and welcome to the Wine and Cheese in the Metaverses show. This is episode 69. Hello, hello. I'm feeling fine. fine. All right, Do you it. have like the world's worst joke book or something? Yeah. Is, that, yes. is that what we're doing? It's yes. so bad that I have to run through it to get to something decent. Like, because, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's really, they're really bad. But. So are we. So this is the worst show ever. We're not patting ourselves on the back, right? Worst show ever. Worst jokes ever. Yep. Worst jokes ever. But we are That's for, right. like F and Smoke says, we are for the people. We're not Man. for ourselves. We're not here to 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 pat ourselves on the back, except for when we all win the carnival contest. But more on that later. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. How good are you at maths? What's five out of eight? Can you do the percentage on that? That's pretty high, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Might be 68% cheese. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh. Right. What um what are we what's been happening around the traps? Around the traps? What is that Australian talk? Are you speaking yeah. English? 62%. <laughs> 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 um around the traps, around the grounds, what's been happening? I've been I've been smashed with trying to get my laptop backed up this week. I've been staying up to ungodly hours. Um, so I've missed out on a bunch of stuff. Yeah, but you're, uh, you've been a whiz at selling for Fiat lately, so you'll be uh, up and running soon. Yeah, well, i got, I got to get a new laptop. There's just no way around it. The screen's falling off this one. No, i got to get a laptop. So um, Can't yeah, be in the so. metaverse without a laptop or desktop. Uh, yeah, well... As I've said, I don't have a desk, so I can't get a desktop and needs to be mobile for going to work and whatnot. So, yes, that's my next agenda is to flippage for a bit of USD so I can buy a new laptop. Yes. And I've also started reselling in Chicago again. I took a bit of a break there. I was too busy to list. So I may have to, like, have you look over my stuff real quick and see what I you think is good for me to sell from for USD. I'm really bad at letting things go, but if if I'm forced at like gunpoint, which is Ben point, like I'll probably do it. I've just I've just been seeing what the floors are and selling floors. So I don't really give a crap at the moment. Um, 
yeah. Partly that's because I've just got stuff everywhere, you know. But there's there's weird places like in Bakersfield. I've got a set of might be ten properties, and it's a nice big block. I purchased well, I minted that way back in the day as maybe a someday when, uh, but I'll, I'll never be able to sell that for the upex I paid for it, and I don't necessarily want to flip that for the floor markup. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that I'll just sit on to do who knows what with. But yeah, other than that, anything's pretty much fair game unless it's a UDU or a collection. Although I have been selling a bunch of collection properties. Like I look through my, I look through my Santa Clara sets collection sets there and i'm like well i want to hang on to those but if i look at the dividend boost it's like just like 300 up x a month i'm like well that's no point selling uh holding on to it i might as well just flip it i could i could mint i could i could sell that for the floor and mint more and just get more dividends and just mint you know yeah. minting stuff so you're right you're right if it's not big and yeah. it's not in a collection then you really don't want to hold on to it well, some people like having lots of collection tokens on it. I've kind of moved past all of that. Um, one of the things that I have been doing, it's kind of a catch-22. Like there's, for me personally, I have a crap ton of small properties that were very cheaply minted, like over 3,000 properties in um, Chicago that are minted for between two and 5,000 UPEX. Well, the floor in Chicago is over 6,000. So I can sell there. I can smash the floor there and still sell at a huge profit. But um, so it's good to have a good chunk of small, easy to flip properties. Yeah. But then for my collections, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bail out of all those tiny collections that, you know, there's no real point to having them. That's you're not having them for the dividend boost. The, the like sale floor on them's tiny. So what I've been trying to do is just sell those and then, like when we get new cities like Buenos Aires, when a decent, um, maybe a limited collection I would look into, but it's unlikely. I really want to get um, at least an exclusive or a rare collection. If something becomes available that's mintable, like a full collection set, well, then I'll, I'll have the funds available to go in a bit heavier. So I'll get like a, you know, a three property set that's worth, 1.5 million or something like that for the dividend boost. I'm yeah. going to try and get my dividend boost in a couple of small, a small set of collections rather than I've got stuff all over the place. So That's good. That's a good way to do it. So speaking of <clears throat> collections, how did you go in the Buenos series release? I slept through the whole thing both times. <laughs> so I'm not interested at this stage. Um, I was able to get all of the collections besides the last two. Uh, the was there was an ultra rare and something else was it? Yeah, was there a they, rare as well. They had um three street collections at the end toward the more rare part of it. Uh, I was able to get. I'll tell you right now. Well, it was interesting that they expanded the FSA. There's another FSA neighborhood popped up straight away, even though the existing FSA neighborhood hadn't sold out. So that was. Kind of yeah i mean it's good to have it there just because sort of thing and i think it's also a good way to monitor who's buying to yep. catch people to see like are you really new are oh. you uh yeah i think Multi -traps. That's the way. oh yeah i think they've been they've been setting a lot of uh traps lately and that's one that they've had a lot of you know good things come out of so me i'm i'm thinking that's what that is like they're monitoring that very closely so if you are someone out there who is thinking okay another fsa place let me create a new account don't do that that's against the toss yeah so. and before we move off that i'll just say too like um we had a whole bunch of people get jailed recently and they were held in alcatraz for a couple of days or some in some cases a few hours while they sorted something out because you know I, I think at this point everyone's going to end up in alcatraz at some stage <laughs> it's just because of the way that you know the web is weaved like that there was people that sold things to people who then did chargebacks on their credit cards and the the person who sold it's just completely innocent but they just they're just tied up in that initial investigation so 
yeah, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised to wake up and find myself in Alcatraz. I, I, would, I know. I would like so have a stress attack. I know it has been said by someone that there should be a list of people that never get in there. And that's kind of stupid. Like, oh, what a load of shit. That's a load of shit. Yeah, you can't pick favorites. That's dumb. Um, if I woke up in there, I know I'm innocent. I know that yeah, yeah, exactly. I would be able to conversate and show records and this, this, and that. And then they would be like, all right, you know, you're good to go. It's it's just unfortunate that this happened when the collection release was out. Yeah. Sort of absolutely. thing. I mean, it's, it is a weird system where you're thrown in Alcatraz and you're guilty until proven innocent. That's, yeah. That's kind of a... But in many, many parts of the world, that's that's the way the system is. So it's kind of an interesting one. Oh, and um, Arroyo and Avenida Cabildo. Ca Cabildo. That's I-L-D. That's a hard B-I-L-D-O. Bildo. I have the Avenida... Santa Fe, though. Oh, nice. Yeah, but I, the Arroyo is the big one. And did you get them in the minting, or you got them up on the secondary? I was able to get the neighborhoods in the minting, but the streets I had to buy second. But they weren't that bad, to be fair. And they were they were decent sizes, too, at, at decent prices, so... Hope you didn't blow all your apex. We got carnival structure ornament sales coming up. No, I still have about oh, I have over six hundred k. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I, I really want my dividends later. to go up. You know, like I want to take advantage of it before you know it changes again. Yeah. So what I'm hoping is that we get the extra expansions come for Buenos Aires, and then I'll dive over and see if there's a question and. It may be the case where I don't get it and I miss out. So in that case, I'll just go over and mint a decent set for the generic collection, like maybe 200K worth or something like that. But I'm, I'm almost certain that gone are the days where I go to a new city and just mint 100 properties at the floor just for the sake of it. I, I don't know. Of... That's been like, I mean, you you waited a whole year, but that's got you your trip to Japan. That's going to get you your yeah. laptop. So. Maybe once I get my once I get my total property number down to my target, then maybe that'll be something I, I look at again in the future. So yeah, you're right, actually. Yeah, it's definitely helpful. So I don't know. We'll play it by you. Should we All get right, into should we the, look uh... into some articles before we Oh you wanted to Oh yeah, yeah, we could do that. I got a few articles. I, I didn't go too heavy this morning, just a few things that um stuck out to me now this first one this is something that we've been banging on about it on this show for ages um it's something that we talked about with Lisette recently and yeah i i any of the conversations i have in real life with people who don't really understand the space about uh, web3 blockchain nfts that sort of stuff this is what i angle towards in my explanation so what the hell am i talking about i'm talking about this there you go Take that away, choose. California Department of Motor Vehicles integrates Tezos to issue car titles. Oh, as NFTs. Just make sure you follow up for the Spotify listeners. Yes. So this is oh, what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, mainstream adoption of <laughs> NFTs and, by extension, blockchain. I firmly believe is just going to come from boring bureaucratic shit, like you know. Deeds to motor cars and car licenses and that sort of stuff. So yeah, I thought this was this was a moment where I I read this heading and I was like, yeah, duh, this is definitely where we're headed. So people will have to really invest in cold wallets, like like uh, away from your computer wallets, if this is the case, because like <laughs> it's gonna be like people going to your house and staying in there and saying it's mine now. They'll just oh, steal a, your, yeah, your yeah. deed for your car and be like, oh, this is mine. Here's the NFT. Could I stole get very it from squirrely. Me. Yeah, I stole it from you, fair square. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Uh, says the California Department of Motor Vehicles has announced its new partnership with Tezos blockchain and software development firm Oxhead Alpha to offer car titles as NFTs. Cool. In a January 26 announcement, the California DMV confirmed integrating Tezos blockchain and Oxhead Alpha to digitize the issuance of motor vehicle titles. The California DMV plans to offer car titles as NFTs. Yeah, so I love I mean, this. I don't think we need to get into it any more than that. Unless it, uh, what has it got here? It's got in quotes, if someone buys a, in, in further quotes, a lemon or a faulty car in California, it will have a special designation on their title. <gasps> That's hilarious. If they then move out of state and back into California with the car, they can shirk the lemon branding and sell the car without the new buyer knowing. Ugh. So there is some greasy stuff to work out there. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think oh, that's yeah. before the NFT. If someone buys a lemon. Yeah, yeah, that's before. And then the but the NFT will always have that on the blockchain that it's a Once lemon. It's marked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. Um, so yeah, that was that was a fun one, that one. But yeah, I just think that's that's where everything's headed. You no. Know? But yeah, that's that's an angle I hadn't thought of before, like the whole you know, if if your wallet gets hacked and someone <laughs> gets your NFTs, <laughs> wow! Yeah, you need to have a a cold wallet. You need to yes. have it like like something that you could plug in and then plug out when you're done. Yeah, it's something that I've started to look into myself as well. Me too. Yeah. But then, where do you store your cold wallet? It just never ends. I know. Yeah, I know. So. All right, the next one. Now, we did have Microsoft um, – was it Microsoft? No, it was Apple recently got um, kind of outed as having a bunch of Metaverse stuff on the go, VR, AR headsets and this with various patterns. Well, now Amazon is also developing an NFT platform in stealth mode. Jeez, stealth mode. Well, remember, the servers that Avalon Druid are using are Amazon servers. Mm. And uh, – oh. Yeah, and and remember, remind me to bring up that Apple um, Decentraland thing when we're like before we finish here. All right, all right. Nice. So it says e-commerce behemoth Amazon is reportedly looking to become the next globally recognized brand to establish its own NFT platform and could be launching its initiative as early as spring two thousand twenty-three. Wow, I'm excited. How far away is that? A couple of months. Couple of months. Um, still summer here. Blockworks obtained this information from four sources familiar with the matter who said that Amazon has been pitching its new digital collectibles platform to various players in the cri crypto ecosystem, including layer one blockchains, blockchain based gaming startups, developers, and digital asset exchanges. Wow. The main focus of the offering is on blockchain based gaming and related NFT applications including one application that is specifically designed to entice Amazon customers to play crypto games and claim free NFTs in the process. Dirk and Idan, go and have a meeting with Amazon. Yes. Yes. If you're not already. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they have. At this stage of development, Amazon <clears throat> is keeping details about the venture secret, but one source believes they plan to announce the new platform in April. That nice. sounds so amazing. All right. We won't... Um, we won't dive into that any further. I just thought that was kind of cool. Yes. So all of these companies quietly working away. What do they say in in the bear market? That's when you that's when you build stuff, something like that. Oh yeah, when there's blood in the street, that's when you buy. And, yeah, and build. And build. All right. This next one. Now we've seen a few of these out there. Um, I thought this was funny. Take okay. it away, Jess. Cookie company Oreo enters Metaverse by partnering with Meta and Martha Stewart. Oh, I love now, Martha. Before <laughs> you read, what blockchain, uh, what um, Metaverse do you think they partnered with? Uh, Don't read. You're cheating. I'm looking at your eyes. Uh, your, Five, your friend, your friend four, in Facebook. What the hell's three, his name? Two, Zuck. Meta? Yeah. Bow, bow. Bum, they created bum, their bum. own metaverse cheese. Oh, wow. All right. Wait, take it away. 
All right, Oreo, a well-known cookie manufacturer, has built its native metaverse, the Oreoverse, an interactive online world where cookie-themed comp competitions and activities may be played. The firm debuted a fresh limited edition cookie called the Most Oreo Oreo. <laughs> People get paid to come up with this shit? Yes, they do. I mean, it's, it's made me happy through Far which they it. launched the Oreoverse. I like that. I like that name, though, the Oreoverse. As per a press release, the launch's promotional offer included a variety of prizes, including a $50,000 contest, gaming consoles, and virtual reality headsets. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. I like this, but it, it makes me wary of what you've been saying for ages, where are we going to end up with 50,000 metaverses? Every single place has a metaverse. It's got its own crypto. It's got its own wallet. But if they somehow put their metaverse as an add-on with the Upland metaverse, you could see a planet Oreo, right, that you could only get to from Upland. Right. Yep. So you're looking at the Upland globe and then you see all these other little worlds out there from the Upland app. You can go to the Oreo verse, Oreo verse world planet yep. and be there. Yes. So Upland, in my opinion, is going to make things a lot easier because they want to have the inoperability to oh. change between things. That reminds me, can you see if you can find that link to that animal y freaking whatever that was called? That thing that just released for Upland that you animal sent me the link for. Oh, yeah, you know, oh, species. Can you find that? Yeah, species. can you find that? Because that's that's a good segue once we I get think, kicked off here in a bit. I think I, I, I scared uh, X1 and, <laughs> and he took it off of his thing. He no, took it success. off of his name. While you're hunting that, I'll just go through this a bit more. So it says the Oreoverse is accessible on desktop mobile and in Horizon Worlds. Well, there you go. That's Horizon Worlds. That's ah, meta. that is meta. That is meta. Yeah, yeah. Woo, cheese So you right. get a half a point. You get a half a point. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Where users may explore the metaverse in virtual reality while donning a MetaQuest headset. With Meta's partnership with Oculus Virtual Reality Headsets, Oreo emphasized that the encounter can also be accessible through mobile devices and laptops. So that's nice. Good. Yes. And like Martha this. Stewart's on. So, yeah, well, you know, we've seen McCain's in the, in the metaverse. Oreos in the metaverse, or a bunch of different um, fast food companies and whatnot. Oh, and let me write this in chat because I have an idea for the challenge. Let oh, yeah. cheese know which celebrity you want her what? to pixel. Why don't you just put it out there now? <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> Hang on, you go go and find some of those images that you did on. I, yeah, I, you, you put oh, those on Twitter. Yes, you bring them up. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, I'll, I'll just get this last article ready while you're doing that, and we'll segue over to that. So this one was good. Here's how the World Economic Forum leaps into the metaverse from Davos 2023. Now we know Dirk and Idam were there and speaking in a whole bunch of different things. So, um, and they are featured in this article as well. So oh, are they? Not, I'm not going to touch on much of this stuff. Um, no. There's a bit of stuff in the sandbox here. Uh, yada, yada, yada. There's a link in the description if you want to check that out. Um, we're uh, Upland fanboys and girls, so we're just going to focus on that bit. Um, mm -hmm. Where was it? We need a bigger voice. I like his hat. <laughs> yes. Look, Edan is smiling. Well, I'd I mean, call that a smirk. Yeah, it's a like smirk. a Mona Lisa. It's a Mona Lisa <laughs> <laughs> The World Economic <laughs> Forum and mainstream institutions seem keenly aware of the promise of Web3 functionality and Metaverse experience. Dirk Luth and Idan Zuckerman, co-founders of Metaverse Platform Upland, shared these sediments in conversation with Cointelegraph on a snowy Thursday evening outside of Blockchain Hub's venue on the promenade. The pair were involved in speaking engagements and networking with crypto and blockchain minds. Conversations around metaverse applications provided a learning opportunity. Luth highlighted the need for industry leaders to have a bigger voice among policymakers and industry leaders at conventions like the WEF. So 
this is cool. Like those guys were at Davos and speaking to all these people. You can you can't even begin to imagine the sort of the ideas and deals and partnerships that little seeds were planted for yeah. in those conversations. So that's that's cool to say to see. Sorry, um, I think everybody's pretty much. And this is in quotes from Edan. I think everybody's pretty much bought into the idea that the web will evolve into an immersive version of it. Yep. It will take time, but people are realizing it and taking the first steps to understand how they fit into the plan, end quotes. And then, yeah, he talks about decentralization. Um, Zuckerman uh, suggested that the future of metaverses will become a hybrid featuring centralized and decentralized elements, in quotes. I always look at decentralization. It's not like one or a zero. A one or a zero it's a gradient so there are some elements that need and should and could be decentralized and those will be the first ones in quotes so yeah that's cool i like it hey blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> ah this is this is the point that's going to segue over to you interoperability <clears throat> could become an important part of the evolution of various metaverse platforms and applications but davos 2023 suggests that collaboration and innovations are already happening Segue over to you, Cheese. Bring it up. Uh, which one? I the have species like a... one. Oh, species. species. One. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, you. this was on your radar. You noticed that X1 had something in his, what was it, his Discord bio about it? Yes. So if you looked at, like, his name right underneath, it said species.io, right? Oh. So I love these little clues from him. Um, and viewers out there, I just want to say this again. Um, you know, uh, this is a form of transparency. If it happens, it's great. If it doesn't happen, then we move on to the next thing. Um, yep. no need to get, you know, our, our undies in a bunch. If this happens, I would be uh, incredibly happy, but this was in his name and I was like, oh my God, this looks like STEM. Yeah, and that they followed it up. They followed it up officially by releasing a video on the Upland channel that um, Idan was speaking about what what this actually is. Because you know, you read it, there's not much information there. But he only said it towards the end, and it was very small. He didn't get yes. into that man, that much detail. Well, what the gist of this is, as is, we know that there's going to be a whole bunch of various metaverses, and it kind of makes sense that for things like um you know they talked about trees or animals or pets or anything like that and we've discussed this at length too in in as far as the decor we're creating like couches and stuff i always blank on that solana project but we talked to that guy about you know it'd be cool if if you if we make something in the upland metaverse like a seating with um, a table then that can be directly ported over into his the metaverse he was setting up so mm -hmm. this is a, this is the same thing but animals so they're trying to set some kind of industry standards to help um grease the wheels for that interoperability so if if you well we know this is coming we know like you said the stem token but haven't they changed it to the life token everyone we always mix that up it's is it life i think is it like the life token is stem yeah it's one and the same <laughs> so we we do know we're getting another I don't know. It's not a manufacturing token. What would you call it? A breeding token? I don't know. It seems weird. A I biological mean, token. Biological. Like yes, you'll have to grow. Maybe you'll have to plant and grow the token. Yeah, <gasps> who knows? So we're getting some extra. Basically, it's going to be a third currency. We already have Apex. We have Spark. We're getting a third currency that's going to somehow allow us to have living things in the game. Well, and this... yeah, th oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, through this system, they're trying to front load that so that once that all comes through, then, yeah, you can port your very same NFTs through. So if you've got an NFT of your pet horse, well, that should be able to seamlessly move over to different metaverses and experiences. Now, I'm thinking, this is speculation uh, station time, is this going to be another planet that we will have to... Is that why they, they made upland a planet so that they can start adding other planets for certain things like this like i i see this as being another planet we go to that will 
have the animals that we can create stuff on there for like for the animals that look similar to the upland map but able to host this i hope not because if that's the case that's just feature creep to the extreme you you got to get your ducks in a row in the world you've already created if yeah i hope that's not the case yeah but this is going to be this is going to be for every every like metaverse that joins the upland platform like you know they were talking about being a platform where everybody else starts off from that they can go to other places if they have this as a standalone planet that means Decentraland people can go there to do this. That means sandbox mm. people can go there to do this. Oreo people, if they join, can go and do this. It would be a way to create a unified, standardized virtual world for all the people involved, like all the planets involved. That wasn't my takeaway. I I get what you're saying, but I don't think I don't think you're going to get people who are ethereum based nft maximalists gonna come to some obscure app to create their stuff or some third party thing i think this is more of the i think they're trying to set up standards for the back end of everything so it might be you know like we get the specs for how to design outdoor decor that's going to be front loaded so yeah i think if you're in the upland metaverse and you want to create one of these things they're going to have their own particular mechanics to do it if you want to do it in Decentraland, they'll probably have their own mechanics to do it. Um, it'll just be that, you know, it may be the case where it'll be interesting to see if there's an arbitrage opportunity. Like if if you're able to, you know, use the life or the STEM token to create a horse in Upland, but then you can port that to Decentraland and sell it in a Decentraland um, store, there yeah. might be a good arbitrage opportunity there. But yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, there's very little information here. All that we know is that there's a bunch of people working together to try and make some kind of interoperability. Well, uh, when this actually does like go out in announcements, I would I would love to have X1 on and kind of pick his brain about it. Like not <clears throat> interrogate, but just kind of like maybe ask what like like uh like some questions he's able to answer and find out more about this. Yeah, I wonder I wonder how far along this is in the process. It can't be that far. I don't think so either, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not something I'm expecting within like to tomorrow, a week, a month, maybe a few months, but it's nice to know that it's there and they're working on it in my opinion. Like I I like to plan for the future. If it if it happens, that's great. If it falls through and gets pushed to the next year, that's fine as well. Mm. I just want to know. You know what I mean? Because wasn't wasn't um pets or something in the roadmap as like Q one or Q two? So maybe this has come come along since. And if that's the case, that will definitely push that back for sure. True. because uh, most people were expecting, you know, trees and that sort of stuff imminently in upland. So we'll just have to wait and see. As we keep trying to um, tell everybody that we interact with, you need patience in this game. <laughs> Nothing, yes. Very, very little happens quickly. So, yeah. Um, need a lot of patience. Oh, yeah. wait. Is that an Axel Rose song? Just a little patience. Yes. Now, before we segue out, you had something about Apple that you needed to share and your celebrity NFTs. All right. Uh, Apple first. So I bought Mana. I was at 2 a.m. I read this article and basically what it said was that Decentraland is in talks with Apple to create a virtual metaverse, like so that people can go in there and uh, I guess do things via, via Appleware. So I thought that was cool. I didn't, I didn't, I don't have an article for it. That would have been cooler, but I'll keep my eye on the pulse and see if any, uh, any more updates come up on it. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I, I think I mentioned to you in DMs that when we were grinding away in the bear, I did look at why 
I was going to buy a little bag of mana sand and what's the other one? There's a third. Oh, eight coin. I was going to take a little nibble there and just sit on it. Um, the We have seen some green candles kick off. Um, I'm still expecting a big, massive pullback. I'm very wary of this being the true, the true, um, you know, moonshot. You want to so. set a date for that and we could do 50 epics bet again? I would no, love to, to win. I mean, it's it's very much a uh, lady gentleman's bet because what are you going to do with five cents? It's like a nickel. But say so I'm, I'm expecting this year is going to be, I think I mentioned that at the, at that time when we were speaking about, I think this is the year of sideways chop. I think we're going to be chopping sideways for quite a while. So I don't to know. The moon, Alice, to the moon. Yes, All right. We'll have to wait <laughs> All right. So uh, basically, I've been on a mission, and that mission is to get as many eyes on Upland as possible through uh, creation of celebrity art. So I did Snoop Doggy Dog. I think I tagged him twice, but that didn't really work. I'm sure the guy's very popular. I'll have to keep trying. But I also did, let me share my Twitter. Boop. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. All right. So I did uh kim kardashian yep. she wasn't that popular like not a lot of people really looked for that but they did look at my taylor swift yeah that's and what blows my mind is how fast you're able to pump these out pixel by pixel it's crazy i was doing lizette and i was doing another project yesterday um with joe lips you're working on an eagle or something? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about where I'm going to put it. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, Joe was like, "Oh my God, how you work so fast? That's crazy!" And he oh, yeah. basically saw it as I do it, and he saw my tricks and tips, which aren't really tricks and tips. I basically just outline outline everything and fill it in with black, and then I color on top of that. And then I just change the shape as I go, erasing some stuff. Guys, I do this live in the MVE chat. Come see. I will put in the announcements, hey, I'm 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 arting live. So that'll kind of tell you. But I didn't like the way I did her face. Like I like the way I did this here in her hair. Yep. So I just kind of yeah. kept adding to it. And then I did three more where you see a little bit more and then a little bit more. Nice. So yeah, you, you definitely need, I've said this to you in DM, you need to record yourself and put these out as those fast forward things. Yeah. You definitely need to do that because this is, this would be epic. You know, to have that video along with that would be so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I have to find a way because they, they, I have this NVIDIA record, but yep. it catches every single sound. Like remember when I tried to record uh a show for you and your your ah, your squeaky chair yes. oh my yeah, yes yeah. yes i have a new chair since then but like everything will come up but when you then edit that to fast forward it yeah you, there, oh, it there must be a way that, well i yeah. would imagine there must be a way that you can mute mute it or something because Instead people record sweet. commentary over the top so true yeah. so true. yes so yeah so the challenge for this um, episode will be to tell me what celebrity you want me to art. Let uh, Cheese know in the contest channel of the MVE server or in the YouTube descriptions, which celebrity would you like to see her create next and don't make it snoop dog don't make it who, who else have you done <laughs> snoop dog taylor swift i can't find and... my snoopy dog yeah don't do those ones yeah 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 don't do ones that i've done already don't do like what the people did with the udu challenge tell us the city you want added to the list and they are telling the cities that are already added in our lists i'm like oh ah. i i misheard the question i did it wrong too then i thought it was why what'd you say 
All right. I, I, I said one more Buenos Aires. I thought it was, um, what do you think will expand? What, what, no, what no. is the next expansion? No, no. It's what, what do you want added into the UDU, like our market analysis screenshot? Oh, Remember We've got an Boston. extra spot there for a city. Boston, hell yeah. And Boston's not even in the metaverse. Boston's not in Upland. See, all right, so you're confusing me. So, Okay, get out of share I, screen and I'll show you. All right, I'm just trying to find my Snoop Dogg. Um, all right, it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, all right, yeah. <laughs> um oh i haven't got it ready what you want to see i was just about to press leave leave chat that would have been hilarious <laughs> it would be more hilarious if i did it again um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is it not that this one Did I sh did I share my? Are you saying that, or did I share desktop? You shared quick as as pod pics. Yes, and then I didn't do that. Oh my god! <laughs> there we go. You got it now. Uh, hold on. It always takes a few seconds. It should be the UDU podcast market thing that i put out every week um why is my screen share paused yeah it's, it's just the hell? uh black i've never seen that before in my life screen share paused what does that mean there we go my god what a waste ah of there we go <laughs> five minutes of air time <laughs> five minutes that was 10 seconds so within the market report we do for the UDU podcast, there is a space uh, at the bottom to add a city. Please do not tell me to add Manhattan or the Bronx or Brooklyn or Detroit because it's already in the freaking list. Oh, my God. What city that is already existing in Upland that isn't in this list would you like added? That's That was the challenge. So maybe I suck at explaining things, but I'm like, no, I'm, uh, I just, uh, yes. So there you go. You got two challenges there. You'll have to be quick for the UDU one. And both of those run in the MBE, um, discord server. All right. Now you've shown us a bunch of stuff, user generated content. Um, we've talked about this previously. I fully believe that 2023 is going to be the year of user generated content. Now, we have had some excellent examples of that over the past week. Um, yes, we did. Trace, do you have the Samurai Aquatics, the new factory? Can you bring that up for us? I shall, and I'm going to share it so that you see me. Yeah, so we, um, we recently moved into the new factory. And so that... That increased our well, it more than doubled the manufacturing capabilities of our outdoor decor business, Sorry. which has been a huge boost. Um, where are you? All right, there we go. Boop, boop, Wakata. Yes, we're at the bottom end of San Francisco, there's a nice big property there. Um, Shacky Shack helped me land the deal on this one there was a oh, wow. usd kind of thing but yeah if you click on that little arrow on the roof you'll be able to see the inventory list so yeah previously we were pumping out i think it was like 15 items every four and a half days uh oh up when oh here we go <laughs> and Ooh. now we're now we're putting out over 50 items every four and a half days so obviously that massively increases our capabilities wow. um how many hours have we got left on that a couple of hours uh yeah one hour seven minutes one hour so when i get off this show i'm going to put a blast out in the samurai aquatics discord server for um <coughs> for our showroom blasts yeah. and um yeah if if you're if you want to be in the loop with when we're going to put stuff up on sale and you should be in Samurai Aquatics Discord server. So I'll be putting these up 
straight after I get off this show. So yeah, we'll be pumping out a bit a bit under a hundred a week. So that's going to make a huge difference to what we can have available. And if you go to thirty Aquavista Way, geez. We're hoping now that because that manufacturing capability has increased so much, we're going to be able to constantly have stock available in the showroom in mid Ten Terrace. So if you ever want to get yourself some, you know, some items that we produce, there should always be stock in there now. Um, this is going to be especially important if you're looking to flesh out your node projects as far as neighborhood development ratings and that go. Um, you should be able to go over there and gobble yourself up a whole bunch of stuff. So, yeah. Very soon, I'm expecting that whole showroom property will be filled with our decor items. I'm going to be going like an absolute madman to just have it fully stocked up at all times. Uh, we have recently had a bunch of decor shops just been open to other participants, uh, showrooms that is, not factories, and have been getting DMs, hey, can you list your stuff in my showroom? That functionality is not yet available. And like I said, we haven't even established a workflow in our own showroom yet. So it's not something we're looking to expand on at this stage, but yeah. So yeah, there's there's still a bunch of items there, heaps of dragon fountains left. But yes, very soon, in fact, by the time this goes live, um, It'll already the showroom have been done. should be, should be <laughs> full of stuff. So yeah, that and and that's what we envisioned at the start of this whole journey. So it has been a... When did we kind of kick off? I think it was maybe September. So it has been a long few months for us to get to this point where we can produce in the amounts that um, we were hoping to do so. So as part of that, uh, D-Tech and Cheese and myself, we got together yesterday morning actually for a bit of a chat on how we're going to proceed. Um, this does put us in a position now where we may be able to undertake uh, small customized orders and that sort of stuff. Um, that could be for the stuff we already have manufactured or if you're a node project and you want your own um, customized decor to suit your own situation, then that's something we are tentatively willing to dip our toes in. But there's going to be big caveats there. Keep in mind that the um, the actual approval process is still very much out of our control. So, But yeah, previously we told people that we weren't going to explore that. Like I did get a lot of inquiries, but we weren't going to explore it until we had the manufacturing capabilities available. That has now happened so we can begin to have those conversations. Sounds so, awesome. Yes. So yeah, user-generated content for us with Samurai Aquatics is kind of just getting to that full speed ahead. The, the next kind of major thing for us will be being allowed to operate a second factory and secondary showrooms um we do have we do have a bunch of options within you know yourself and dtech and we have a few you know there's fresno oakland a few different places we've got some setups but we also have an extensive web of people looking to get involved through the udu plus our close associates you know extended associates with um ucc and a bunch of other projects so yeah uh, basically we're going to work with people that we have established relationships with that we know, you know, we know we can trust and that sort of thing. So, but yeah, most of that sort of stuff for us is just a wait and see situation. Now, if you weren't aware, um, yeah, Samurai Aquatics is an equal three-way partnership between myself, uh, More Cheese and the one and only DTEC. Now DTEC has, He's waking up, was it yesterday morning? Was that when it was released or the morning before? He's waking up, gone to drop his daughter off at kindergarten and then checked his phone as he's about to drive home and realised he's got like 40 messages. His phone's blowing up and he's like, what the hell's happening? And then he's found out that he has won five of the eight available um, ornament, structure ornaments contest for the carnival situation that happened. Um, what do you say? You, you it wasn't that long ago, Cheese, we, we were kind of dragging him to, come on, we, we think you're going to be awesome at this. We think you can do it. And he's like, oh, really? So it's He's just, very just humble. See. He's very yeah. humble. He he learned from scratch. He taught himself. Uh, he's come such a long way. And the fact that someone, and I'm, I'm not taking anything away from people who 
get their stuff from like who buy their stuff to submit but this is someone who plays upland he created all the designs for the people who submitted which were ben myself joe uh etc and i i'm like so proud of him he's like <laughs> yes I'm, I'm just so proud of him um buy their stuff to submit now we recently had a thing do you want to mention the the heart statue that we were kind of working on? Because I'm going to bring that up. Sure. Oh my freaking god! Just just like the general idea. So, oh, actually, oh my god, Ben. <laughs> so what happened? I created this for Valentine's Day. Do you see it? So Ben um, and I are holding a heart that I pixelized, right? Yes. All right. So. Uh, this was last year, Valentine's Day, and now that we have the decor shop, I want I want to do some things that are unique, right? I want to have a play on certain certain holidays, um, and Valentine's is is my favorite because it's a heart, and I wanted to I created this this heart pixel that you saw in my shirt. And I put it standing up with a sign on it that says the letter B and mine. And I yep. asked D-Tech to kind of create it. And we're working on this now. But um, you could pull that up and, and show people. Oh, I, I don't have it. Sorry. Oh, do you want me to show? All right. I have it. Hold no, on. I just meant like mention. So we, we were working on, uh, Cheese had the idea for a Valentine's Day statue. And... You know, basically, one of the well, the main feature of that was a heart. And DTEC said, "Look, I I can make that from scratch. That's no worries, but that's going to take a long time. Or I could purchase this third party one that's already done. We just put it in and edit it, and this, that, and the other thing." Um, he was like, "With if you just do a quick read through the license agreement, it seems like that's okay to do." But he asked me to take a closer look at the licensing agreement. And what do you know from the licensing agreement? It says part seven, section D virtual goods sales. You may not import, upload, reproduce, make available, publish, transmit, distribute, or sub license stock media products in creations of virtual goods or worlds for any 3d community in quotes, virtual world, unless you are, or your client owns the virtual world platform and it complies with the foregoing restrictions. Now, why am I saying that? A lot of these people that are employing third parties to create them items that they then submit for competitions and then go on to sell within Upland, unless you've been able to track all of the items that they've, you know, the licensing agreements, you're setting yourself up for some potential massive dramas further down the line. Yeah. Um, you're, you're employing a third party that you don't know where they've got them from. You don't know if they've made those items from scratch or whether they've just pulled them from these sort of sites. So yeah, if, if that's what you're doing, be extremely cautious, please. Um, yeah. I, I just see people getting in a world of shit over that. Oh, so. Sorry. I'm looking for my chapstick. My lips, they get so dry. Yes. Uh, I'll power through it, Ben. The struggle <laughs> of being a block of cheese. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we've gone back to the drawing board with that particular item and DTEC will do that from scratch because it's just not worth the potential legal shit fight you're going to set yourself up for. So Yeah, yeah. but I mean, I'm going to be putting, I, I already have the um, kind of like model he's going to go by. I found it. Yeah. And um, the textures, do you think I shouldn't, I shouldn't show it, right? Not yet. No, not at this stage. No. All right, all right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, while, while 2023, I believe, is the year of user-generated content, yeah, if you're somebody that is employing third-party services and you're you're either not creating them yourself or you're not part of a team that's actively creating everything from scratch, yeah, please do your research. Um, don't just take people's word for their word because... Oof. Yeah, um, <laughs> that happened to me. It happened to me with with yeah, the yeah, logos with the, and oh my the wine and God. cheese NFTs, yeah. Because you, and especially with Tilia and the option to sell things for USD, like look at our outdoor decor stuff. If we had have sold all this stuff for USD, and then you know, I just see people getting wrecked. Cheese, I'm, you know, 
Yeah. I know that we we've got our bases covered, so I'm not worried about us, but I just see these people. We have to look out. These, these we have to look out for the community. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely something to be cautious of. Anyway, that's that's kind of a downer. We shall get back to the positives. Like I said, um D Tech was able to take out five of the eight versions. So we're just gonna have a quick look through of those. So if if you didn't already see there's a bit there's a way that you can clickety click through DTEC's profile and you can see all of the stuff that he has worked on or submitted for himself, for Samurai Aquatics, for other people. Like he's got some various coin projects going on here. Um, contrary to popular belief, we do not have DTEC chained up in the basement, only occasionally. We um, want to. I yeah. I want to, but yes. it's not. Yeah, Ben keeps talking me out of it. Yeah, so you can see all the cool stuff that he did. And as I said, keep in mind, this is a guy that it was only, it wasn't that long ago. He started from nothing. So people out there who want to do 3D, um, yeah, it's... It's it kind of frustrates me when people say, "Oh, it's not fair," or "Why can't I do that?" Well, you can. You just got to put the time and effort in. D Tech has, like I said, he has worked like an absolute madman. He has had a shitload of help along the way. Whether it be, um, I know Lily Field, she's been a massive help to him. Um, I believe Dees Jack. That they have a whole community. That's oh, the donut to yeah. help each other. And then now we've seen that DTEC has since gone with this competition itself. Like he was up to all sorts of hours guiding other people through the process. Yeah. Um, and like, cause DTEC's been through hell as far as the Samurai Aquatic submissions. So a lot of the things that he submitted, there was no errors associated. It was just accepted straight away because he has that process streamlined. So yeah, um, you, you can't point your finger and say it's unfair if you yourself haven't put the time effort and energy into it. So Anyhow, let's have a look what was the winner. Now, this was the one that DTEC submitted himself. Um, if you listen on the Spotify, you just have to bear with us. Um, this is the big band for the micro house. I love it. Now, if you've been watching the UDU podcast, I just recently completed the Chode Node in Santa Clara, and I believe <laughs> there's almost 100 micro houses. So I would love to have a whole bunch of these. I just think I'm going to run out of... Apex. I have to stick within a budget because I can just see myself going ballistic on this stuff. So I'm just going to have to be careful, I think. But yeah, I this, know. this looks incredible. And a lot of these elements, one of the things with um, DTEC when, you know, skills build on top of skills. So DTEC did a samurai sleigh that we've already submitted pr well prior to Christmas for an item that we were going to potentially sell in our Samurai Aquatic store that had a lot of these elements as far as the piping and this sort of stuff. Uh -huh. so. And that's going to be so cool in front yeah. of, like if you have one of those in front of your chode node. Parked in front, these, yeah. Oh my God. Ugh. That's next, cool. Next yes. Christmas is going to be lit. Yeah, so that was that was DTEC submission for the micro house, which is it's really cool. Yes. Um, the next one, I believe, is called Flight of the Carnival. And I don't know, what, what is this, a luxury ranch house or something? I, this I is don't amazing. Know. I love the fact that you can. It's like you're yeah. getting buying tickets to get to into a balloon. balloon. And it has the, that beautiful carnival look in, in the uh, seams of the balloon. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It's like that's so crazy looking at it. Absolutely. And this is one that um, Rob, the agency, submitted. So now a lot of, well, not a lot of people, there was a few people that got their nose out of joint. Well, that's unfair that one artist is submitting on behalf of other people. That has been a feature of these competitions since inception. And like yep. I said, there, there is, there is, if you look at the list of who submitted what, the amount of people who actually created the items all themselves and submitted them by themselves is minuscule compared minuscule. to the list of people who worked with third parties didn't create them themselves or like we did um submitted on the behalf of other people so yeah that was that one and then the next was the one that you submitted what did you call it the corona ball yeah football fever <laughs> yes so this is for the apartment house and you this was a tight race the percentage on this one yeah i think it was point twenty yeah, between point, me and someone else yeah, this is a cool one. This is going to, and like I said, I'm definitely going to gobble as many of these I, 
as I can to fill out the the apartments in Midtown yeah. Terrace. And and like if somebody has like a soccer wants a soccer note or or has something that like they want to make it like soccer centric, this is yep. perfect. Yep. It's perfect. It's a celebration. It's I don't know. Did you? I, I can't remember. Did you offer him much feedback? Uh, we didn't come up with these ideas. Like Detect just said, "Hey, this is what I want to do." Or did I, you have any? I, I did because I did. I didn't come up with the soccer, but when he showed me the first thing, I didn't yeah. like the 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 black, the old totally black. So he changed that uh, and put the green with the the black in the middle oh. design. <laughs> This is so hard to navigate on my touchscreen laptop. Wow! I'm trying to see what these spikes are. Wow! Wow! Let me back. Like Wayne's world. Let me back out of there. So yeah, that was that was the one that she submitted and one on behalf of DTEC. The next one was the the one that Joe lives and DTEC worked on. That's beautiful. This I is like that. a cool explosion thing. It what did you say? It reminds you of a um outback steakhouse blooming onion. Yeah. Was that you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know the first time i ever saw a blooming onion or had one was at an outback steakhouse in japan like apparently outback steakhouses are here but they're they're definitely not a thing the onion is so good i they it's have one good. in the texas roadhouse but i don't like yeah. it as much it's not flavorful mm. so yeah that was very cool congrats on joe lives for that one um oh they're gonna reload yeah there's two more. I think it was my one and somebody else. So, yeah, this is the one that I did. I since changed the name after I submitted. What uh, was it before? So, oh, this is, the, <clears throat> this is what he named it, and I called it Party Prince or something. I don't know. I just oh. came up with some weird thing, a three-piece. So this is the townhouse. Now, if you've seen Midtown Terrace, I have 300-something townhouses. So this... It's going to seem a bit egocentric that I'm going to go ballistic on this, but yes, I am going to go ballistic on this. So, um, to you know, flesh out Midtown Terrace, go and get yourself an eight butt. <laughs> it's, it's not a monkey, it does not have a tail, it is an eight. Yes, and some people said, I oh, that that was the other thing. Some people got their nose out of joint, how it's not really a reflection of carnival. That's I, th I think that's justifiable feedback. Um, you know we weren't involved in the selection process or anything like that. Um, I offered minimal input as far as feedback as this was, you know, straight out of the brain of DTEC, like some of the stuff, it was simple stuff. Like uh, he asked about the shading on the rocks and that sort of stuff. So, well, you have uh, a game that involves destroy the monkeys, destroy yeah. the monkeys. So like you yeah. kind of put a piece of your game creating history into this. Yeah, well, that came after. It just happened to be a weird coincidence. I was like, do, do you know that I have a game where they wear the the um, the um bosses have banana, you know, crowns? Wow. So, yeah, that, that was just a kind of so funny coincidence. So he created this without even, wow, that's cool. Yeah, just happened to be a funny it. coincidence. He's a freaking genius. Yes, and last but not least, which one are we missing? I'm forgetting which one we're missing. There's one that had this really nice. Ah, no. I was, I was just going to use, so that was the five. I was just going to, sorry, finish your thought. What were you going to say? Oh, no, there was something that I didn't see that he made. Maybe it didn't get picked, but it had these really cool, it looked like like a, a fan, and it had yep. these really cool colors in between. That yeah. one was really pretty because it, like, tricked your eyes a bit. Yeah. Now, one of the things with that um, competition was apparently through somehow Upland in that process lost like 200 items that were submitted. Um, okay. Some people waited until the very last day to submit their items. Um, so there's a lot of work that needs to be done on that sort of things to streamline that whole process. And this this comes back to one of the sore points that I know DTEC has is he submitted this Brooklyn townhouse that he created, a very skinny one way way back in the day but it got lost or something and i know with the car uh, not the carnival the genesis the genesis ornaments competitions he he had items that got lost like he submitted them but they were never found so um yeah i think i mentioned this in the discord channels this is uh, i believe this is supreme recognition for the work that dtech has put in and all the stuff he's done and he like i said he has been he's been through the grind as far as learning how to do this 
every possible setback you could think of as far as submitting items, getting lost, uh, errors, bugs. He's been through all that as well, and he's just stuck to the grind and stuck it out. So, yeah. And that is um, a Brooklyn, like, that is a Brooklyn look. Like, I actually lived for two years yep. during my bougie years in yes. a in a structure like that in Brooklyn on um, President Street. Yeah, and it, he, he said that hurts his heart still. Like if, if he goes to Brooklyn now in the Upland map and looks around, he's like, my my building should have been there or could have been there, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it is one of those things. Like I said, it's he's just stuck it out. I don't know what this last one was that I pulled up. Ah, oh, I was just using, ah, that's what I pulled this up. So now we have yesterday as part of the chat that we had, uh, D-Tech Cheese and myself, we did talk about... Um, for the next set of items that we're going to do, it's going to be a bit more blocky. Like this first set was very rounded wood based. Um, we're thinking the next, if we are going to do another kind of set, it's going to be a bit more modern, which is a bit more block, blocky, blockier style, which frees up a lot of triangles for detect to work on um, like uh, the, what do you call it? The finer features or something like that. The details, finer details. So yeah, it's pretty hard to see there, but, there is the Samurai Aquatics logo. <laughs> so there's the Samurai Aquatics logo on there. You know, there's knobs and this, that, and the other thing. It is pretty hard to see if you just look at it from a glance. But for this next set, we're really going to dive into that sort of things. Like like a, a stone the, kind of thing. And yeah, that'll be and we, the uncommon. Yes. And we had a lot of good feedback on the, like the seating with fire pit that has your artwork on the cushions and that sort of stuff. So mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely what we're kind of going to angle in towards as well. So that's a lot of the user generated content stuff that kind of we've got going on that has been going on, but there was some even more massive news than that that dropped recently cheese. Oh my What's God. this all about? So Elijah, this Elijah guy, this he Elijah just came guy. out of he came out of the blue, like not that long ago. We had him on the wine and cheese show. He mm -hmm. outlined all these plans. And what do you know? This speak of stick to the grind, have a plan, stick to it. Man. Work hard. Like even oh. he had people against him too. Yep. People against him. And you know, that's, that just goes to show you like uh, stick to whatever you're doing. H hang out with like-minded people, set yep. your, set your, your friend your friend list like know who was there for you and who wasn't and just kind of go with that um and he did and he kept going and it was great like i'm a pretty sensitive cheese so like if i went through half the stuff he did i would have been like ben! <laughs> yes uh... but, but let me share his uh yeah well, i haven't his... like I, I mentioned to cheese before we got kicked off i haven't had a chance to look at this myself so this i'll be looking at this for the first time as well so so um, hopefully we can get um hopefully we can get elijah back on at some stage oh to... we yeah we have to we because have. this is what he's been working on up to this point i doubt yeah. this is the only thing he's been working on so you know as i said he was talking about this way back when we had him on so oh he has a lot see. he has a lot yeah. he does racing and every everything so basically <laughs> if you want to get to his shop um go to the the search this is where he's at 3152 budao avenue i don't know if i'm saying that right but you click that yeah. it'll go there that's in la isn't it yeah the real node la look for the purple icon there wouldn't be many purple icons over in la i would imagine so how many of these how many of these um immersive nft experiences have they been so far chase that are linked to upland no yeah yeah <laughs> so this is the first this is the first this is the, the genesis first. the genesis it's the genesis chase <laughs> da, da, the da, first da, 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 da. so what does that mean that means if you go to his his thing here and you click this right dev shop this takes you to the application of his freaking gallery which now, do you need to be in do you need to be in L and la to access any of this no you do not all you have to do is put in that address that i just i just said and we'll have that yep. in the description 
and then take me to the application. Click. Bum, bum. Do you know off the top of your head, does this work on mobile? I don't know. Um, you have, have to, well. yeah, you have to try. So it says, welcome to the real node LA gallery. As you explore, we ask that you keep things within bounds of blah, blah, blah. Explore the space around you, meet up with others, emote, dance, and vibes out. Now you can, nice. when if you press continue, basically it gives you a little rundown of how you move around to create your avatar. But yep. if you've been here before, like I have, you just press log in and I've logged in through Google. Ah, ah, will it show it? Yes, it will. Just go off share screen for a second. All right, hold on, peoples. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to bring that up now. Um, That's one thing I can mention too. We had the new globe feature come in and I was whinging to cheese before we got kicked off. That has completely glitched out how you navigate the Upland map on mobile. You cannot side scroll very far without it glitching out. So that's me having a wine. <laughs> whiny, whiny, whiny. Take whiny, me whiny, whiny. Uh, it says, yeah, I, I just clicked that on mobile. It says not compatible. Your device is incompatible with an available version of this 3D party application. Do you want to access it anyway? Tick. Yep. All right. Let's check it out. To explore this space, download our mobile app. Okay, so that's cool. So this is the um, spatial situation or whatever you call it, the spatial app that uh, Elijah must have used. All right, All right I'm gonna going get that back and check on it out. share. All right, so I was very lazy creating my character. So... <laughs> I just took whatever was there. I changed the shirt nice. to green because it's my favorite color. But basically, this is where you Look start out. Yes. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. Now, this is what we were promised way back when. And we, we had this kind of way back in the Halloween. I think that was Halloween 2020. But it wasn't like this. I mean, it was very basic functionality where you could enter a building and watch a video. But yeah. So like this, this is his block explorer shop. He has all his things right here to look at. So they're mm -hmm. portals, basically. You can mm -hmm. jump to different places in the map. And then you go up. The yeah, stairs. look at that, and you can see it in there like a bubble. That is that is cool. Right, right, yes, yes, and that what? is so freaking cool. Oh, someone came in here. My name Crosby. Uh, Did you see? You could see they just zoinked in. They went zoink. Zoink. And they dropped in. <laughs> And look at that beautiful piece of artwork on the left there, Chase. Where did that come from? Yeah, look at this ish. Yes. Now, is there, what, what does that say there? View NFT. Travel uh, to view the NFT. So if you click this. Does that take you to Wax? Does that well, take you to Atomic Hub? It takes you to Atomic Hub and it'll show it. Um, I asked him to change this to the nefty because i like to sell my stuff on nefty so people can get points whenever they buy you know our nfts our one cheese nfts so you go there and it'll take you and this is oh, so, so basically with this system you can go into his immersive experience you can look at all the art on his wall if, if that was linked to nefty you could say hey that's a cool piece of art i want to buy that yes and if there's some available, then you just click, click, click. Yeah, that, That's then, a game changer right there, isn't it? That's a game changer. That's now, game do changer. all of them have that? It's because I see that piece of art, that car on the left, it doesn't have that bubble. So that might be a separate thing. Yeah, that's hot though. I like the... That might be one of those Detroit Rally League images, perhaps. Yeah. But the, I know if you scroll further to the left, there's another one there. That, oh, that yeah. Does, yeah. So he energy. does um, the drones and drone photos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's yeah, see. Yeah, look at that. Buy NFT. And then you can buy that particular NFT. Wow. Yeah, this, this, is, this is epic. Yeah. Right? And you just go back to the other tab. Yeah, I'm kind of... I'm going to be 
interested to explore this on mobile because like I've been warning about, I'm just a mobile only fiend. Um, that may change if I manage to get myself a laptop in the future, but we'll, we shall see. And look at that one. Yeah. So at the moment, is there, I saw you went up a level. Is that it? Is there two levels? Is there an, any outdoor experiences? Um, there were other, there were other places to go from, I remember from the last time and, uh, let's see. All right. Portal room. Let's see. Portal room. Oh, there you go. You're going to go to a different room. Oh, wow. Wow. So in this room you've ported to, so this is within the uh, real node LA. You can see he's got his cars there. Wow. In a glass box. He's got spark stuff in glass boxes. This is beautiful. <laughs> oh, and then you exit back to the gallery. You go back in there. Join us on Discord links. This is great. What's that? Yeah, this is very cool. All different. Um, you, you cannot imagine the amount of work that he's put in to develop all this. Oh, yeah. It's a and key squirrel. It was. Elijah's house. Ah, that's cool. You can go right there. Wow. This needs some samurai aquatics furniture. <laughs> oh. oh wow look at that freaking waterfall right outside his house it's kind of a bit creepy that you can just zoink into somebody's house i guess but no but this is where we're all headed like this was the um this was the long ago promise of buying a property in upland was you were going to be able to do this to display your nfts and have <gasps> an in-home experience can I don't drown? jump off the cliff cheese there is hope <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cut plus the waterfall. <laughs> oh shoot! Let's see. Oh. You did. <laughs> <laughs> She's fallen off the earth, and you landed back in there. That was creepy. <laughs> There's no escape. R.I.P. Chase, only to be resurrected. All hail. All hail, indeed. Yeah. So then, that's as as I said, like. 2023, the year of user-generated content. Um, this is the first iteration of this kind of experience. Um, you know, where's this? Where's this sort of stuff going to be at by the end of 2023? You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. If this is if this is the the detail and functionality level that it starts at, wow, <laughs> that's so cool. Ah, oh, that's really cool. So yeah, if if you, as I said, if you are listening on the Spotify, um, try and get yourself over and check that out, or yeah, follow the the address in the description and check it out yourself. Um, do you I hear been this? Able to do it on mobile. No, you probably when you press share screen, you didn't click the button. So oh this gosh. is linked to his um, videos. So you can play his YouTube videos or something in there by the looks of it. Oh, this is the, the theater the screen. to watch movies. Oh, that's really cool. Look, he's got cars, motorbikes. I just like, I, I love that little portal system where you can actually kind of get a preview of what's in there. That's really cool. What's this motorcycle? Oh! <gasps> Oh, what I thought it was going to put me on top. <laughs> you just disappeared. All right, wait, I got to get out of here. It's loud. Yeah, so definitely, it's got definitely it. get on and check that out. Um, as I said, we'll, we'll work on trying to get Elijah back on for a chat. Oh, yeah. And I suppose. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And I'm back, right. back home. <laughs> Is there nothing else we needed to touch on this week, Chase? We're a bit all over the place today, but yeah. As I well, said, yeah, I'm we just... talked about a lot, though. 
I'm just really excited about uh, where user generated content is headed this year. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's, this is the year for it. I think it's going to be really amazing to see where it all ends up. And I'm very glad like someone as humble as, you know, Elijah was able to be the first, you know, because uh, you talk to the guy, he's real down to earth, friendly. Um, yeah, I like oh, it. Just, he's got the silky smooth voice. Um, if if you wanted to check out the the kind of the spotlight that we had with Elijah, where he talked about how he was, you know, this was all the work in projects. That was episode thirty five, and I'll link that in the description as well. So that was what are we up to now? Sixty nine. So yeah, that's quite a while while back. So. Yeah. We've been busy. Yes. Oh my gosh. And so has Elijah. Yeah. <laughs> We've been busy talking about amazing people. Yeah. Aw awesome stuff, mate. Congratulations. Um, I don't know if he's, I, I mean, I would imagine he's not working on that solely by himself. Although I don't know that for a fact, but yeah. He might be. So I'll say congratulations to you and by extension, your team, if such a team exists. But yeah, awesome stuff. Well, Chase, what else you got planned for this week? Anything in particular on your radar? What are you, what are you doing? Uh, I might go check out an Alice in Wonderland thing that's near us in Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to see about it. It's a lot of walking. But the weather is nice over here. It's like 40, de 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Which is uh, I love that kind of weather. It's it's nice and crisp. It's it's sweater weather. Getting getting out in the real life, getting some desert air. That's like four point four degrees Celsius for you. Oh wow! No thanks. Really? So, it's crisp. Four point four four point four. That's There's no moisture. Freezing. There's That's no freezing. moisture. Your big baby. Whatever. I was Whatever. born in the tropics. I was born in the <laughs> tropics, subtropics. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm. What have I got planned for this upcoming week? I'm gonna grind my USD sales, grind my Chicago flips, and waiting for the release of the Carnival structure ornaments to go ballistic, gobbling as many of those up as I can. And what else is there? Oh yeah, I'm hoping that we get an idea of when the Buenos series is going to extend. That'll be the next plan. Other than that, just taking it easy. On that note, get us shall out. I, shall I get us out of here? <laughs> get us out of here. And remember to write those celebrities in the YouTube descript the YouTube comments. Love you all and stay fresh, cheese bags. Go ahead, just pick you up. Talk about the cheese, motherfucker. Go ahead, get your pinky up. Go ahead, get your pinky up. Go ahead, get your pinky up. Talk about the cheese, motherfucker. Go ahead, get your pinky up. Go ahead, get your pinky up. Kill that fire, samurai. Riding on the dingo, flying through the sky. Cheese in the house, get up to dry. Put you with the hairbrush, shoot you with the knife. Kill that fire, samurai. Riding on the dingo, flying through the sky. With the knife, fly through the sky, you let fire set up the ride, ride on the deep go fly through the sky, shoes in the house get off the ride, put you with the hairbrush, hit you with the knife, you let fire set up the ride, ride on the deep go fly through the sky, put you with the knife, fly through the sky. Are you looking for some of that quality outdoor decor? But you got no freaking idea where to go? Well, come on over to Samurai Aquatics and Decor for all your outdoor decor needs. Got yourself an empty plot of boring virtual real estate in the metaverse, do you? Yeah, just.
delete that. I'm still not ready, sorry. Get yourself an empty plot of boring virtual real estate in the metaverse, do you? Or maybe some kind of crappy ramshackle building that, I don't know, needs a bit of extra spunk to it or something. And stop mucking about and get yourself over to Samurai Aquatics Discord to see all our available stock. We've got loads of different decor to spend your pretend money on. We've got saunas to fire you up and ice baths to chew you the fudge out. Literally stock coming out of our ears. Grills, swings, seating and more. So much more. And if we don't got it, give us a buzz and we can probably make it. Get yourself on over to Samurai Aquatics at 30 Aqua Vista Way in Midtown Terrace, San Francisco, Liggety Split, and gorge yourself on outdoor decor.